That is now because I'm looking at evidence for ecological change. So the science understands we're going to look at. Ecosystems can change over time. Evidence for longer term changes can be found in geological deposits, including the fossil record. The biotic and abiotic factors that affect ecosystems change over time. So changes in climate and other environmental factors that have caused significant changes to ecosystems, um, these factors can be captured in the fossil record. And here's an example over here looking at reefs. Here you can see um, we're looking at time going back. So there's uh, millions of years going back. Yeah, yes, so these are millions of years up top here. So these are geological epochs at the top. So you can see that we have times when there's ice and times when it's warm, times when it's cool, times when it's warm. So going back, you can see temperature changes. And evidence that this is found in the fossil record, but looking at things like um, isotopes of oxygen or carbon. We can see that normally we have these mega reef periods, and these are followed by periods where the mega reef disappears, and we get these big gaps in the reef record. That's usually preceded by a change in temperature from warm to cold. And with that, we get a change in the mix of species. So things like bryozoans and calcitic bivalves, these kinds of, these disappear after time, and we get uh, different species of corals replacing previous ones. The fossil record shows up evidence of past life forms, uh, things that might have gone extinct. Based on the fossils, and fossils are preserved remains of living things, as well as geology, so looking at the rocks themselves, we can infer what's happened in the past. A good example of this is uh, during the Carboniferous period, we know that the levels of oxygen in the atmosphere were much higher, so around 30 to 35% compared to the 20% that they are at the moment. Because of this high um, oxygen level, it's theorised that this might have caused um, some insects to grow in size to larger than what they are today. So this is a fossil of Meganeuropsis. It's a dragonfly, and the wingspan of this, this dragonfly is about 75 centimetres. So that's about yeah, that much. So that's quite big. Um, this is Paul, Paul Monoscorpius. This is a scorpion that's about the size of a skateboard. So again, about 75, 80 centimetres long. The reason why we think higher oxygen has allowed these insects to grow larger than they do today is because the way that the oxygen gets into insects is through holes in their side. If there's higher oxygen levels, then that means that the insects can grow bigger because they have more oxygen available and that allows them to grow a bit bigger. Um, this theory is, isn't confirmed. There's arguments um, for different theories as well. But it's possible that this increase in oxygen levels lead to, led to an increase in these insect size. When changes in the geological record are noted, this often leads to changes in the fossil record as well. So if we look at this picture here, I took this picture in uh, the American Museum of Natural History in New York. This is a layer through some rocks. There's this grey layer here. Below this grey layer you would find dinosaurs, above it you don't. What this grey layer is, this is the impact layer that's remaining from the KPG extinction event. So this is the collision with something from space that killed off all the dinosaurs. Examples like this happen all the way through the fossil record. So you see changes in species as time goes on. Usually less complicated species below, and then more complicated species above. Let's look at an Australian example. So the Ediacara Hills they found in the Flinders Range is about 600 kilometres north of Adelaide. There's been big changes over geological time to these hills. At the moment they're about 400 kilometres away from uh, the sea, but they used to be at the bottom of an ocean, uh, a large sea about 600 million years ago. There are these weird preserved fossils in the Ediacara Hills called the Ediacara Biota. And these are organisms that predate animals and plants. Um, they have particular body plans that we don't see anymore. Um, and these guys predate the Cambrian fossils, where we see the explosion of most of the living things that we see today. Um, they show organisms similar to flatworms, corals, and jellyfish. So here we can see a fossil. This is a Dickinsonia fossil. And here is what it's imagined that it might have looked like if it was living. So a uh, very weird biota. So these fossils show that both the biotic and abiotic components of the ecosystem have changed over time. At the moment, the area is semi-arid, it's hilly. Um, there's trees, such as gum, melly, black oat. In terms of animals, the kangaroos, wallabies, native birds, and reptiles. This is what it looks like today in the Flinders Ranges. But previously, like I said, it was at the bottom of a shallow sea. So clearly the abiotic factors have changed over time. It's uh, now above land, it used to be below the water. And we've got changes in species over time too, from 600 million years ago to now. The majority of the living things found in the Ediacaran fossils are tubular or frond-shaped, so here's Dickinsonia that we talked about before. We think they were sessile, and that means they don't move around, but Dickinsonia is theorised that it did kind of crawl around a little bit. We're not sure if they were animals, if they're algae, protists, or intermediates between animals and plants, we just don't know. 
The fossils that are preserved are from soft-bodied organisms, and soft-bodied organisms don't preserve particularly well. There's not much detail, there's not enough detail really to tell us exactly what kind of organisms they are. The fossils kind of look like discs, tubes, bags, or mattresses, so that's how it's uh, explained on Wikipedia. This is a very common one, and it was thought that this is kind of a jellyfish that was just sitting at the bottom of the ocean, but now it's thought that it might be the holdfast for something that was floating above it. So this is just where it was holding onto the mud at the bottom of the ocean. But because the uh, rest of the organism isn't preserved, we don't know. So changes in ecology can be captured in the fossil record, and these are ch linked to things like changes in climate. So over here we can have a look at uh, in vegetation in Alaska, for example. So we can see different types of species and the temperature trends that are occurring with these species that we can see in the fossil record. So when we have large amounts of warming, we get these temperate hardwoods and conifers being present in Alaska. If we look at when it's colder um, and more recent, we see tundra and pine, spruce and birch forest. So looking at particular types of evidence, we can determine the temperature trends for the area. And we can also look at the fossils to determine what kind of organisms were living at the time. This is another example looking in Africa. And again, we're looking back uh, millions of years ago. And we're looking at changes in Africa in terms of things like um, the climate, if it was dry or wet, uh, vegetation cover, if there's any volcanism. And over here we're looking at uh, human evolution, so early hominins and bipedals. So if we look at the data here, and this is using isotopes of oxygen to determine whether the climate was wet or dry, this is kind of optimum climate that's present here. Over time we can see the climate varies because it does that. We start to see this trend where it starts wet and then it dries out. I theorise that this change in climate has led to the evolution of humans. The reason for that is we get changes from tropical rainforest, which we have down here, um, to savanna. So the savanna starts to take over from the rainforest and take over large areas of Africa. When this happens, we get, uh, because there's a change in the environment, we get a change of species, and it also gives opportunity for new niches to open up in the ecosystem. We get evolution of organisms to fit into those new niches. So here we have uh, Afropithecus, so very early uh, hominins, and in the end we end up with Australopithecus afarensis, which is Lucy, which is a bipedal organism, and it's theorized that by standing off on the feet, you get a better view in a savanna grassland than you would if you were down on all fours. So the advantage there is by being able to stand up you can see more, you're more likely to survive and more likely to reproduce since you can see things like predators of food. And that's driven by this change in climate that we can see in the fossil record. Today with Science we looked at how ecological change can be captured in the fossil record. That's it for Science Today. See ya.